Are we acknowledging God in all of our ways? Acknowledging that God is our mind and therefore only infinite intelligence can express itself as the activity of our being? Or do we sometimes lean on our own human understanding? Are we acknowledging God as the one infinite power, understanding that the terrifying human power, whether it appears as armies in the field or cancer of the body, is but the arm of flesh, and therefore it is without power and jurisdiction in our experience? Are we acknowledging God as the main theme of our life, the source of our supply, the activity of our being. Do we acknowledge God upon waking in the morning? Do we acknowledge that only the power of God could have given us rest or sleep and that only the power and presence of God could awaken us to a new day? Here in this new day, God is the governor. God is the Lord and master of this day. And God is not my bank account, not my job, not my family, not my friends, but God controls the issues of the day. God governs and rules the day. God is the power that never slumbers and never sleeps. God is omnipresent with me throughout my slumber and my rest. God is resting me even if I cannot sleep. The acknowledgement Acknowledgement of God as the real essence of our being, the real law of our being, the protection and supply of our being, is the acknowledgement of Him in all of our ways. The Word of God is quick and sharp and powerful, and in that Word I have a protection within me greater than anything that is in the eternal realm. I have meat that ye know not of. I have food and drink and medicine and wine. I have inspiration, life, truth, and love. Within me is the word of God, and it is greater than anything that is in the world. Protective prayer lies in the realization that any truth we know is a universal truth. God is indestructible life and intelligence, and that we will always be led in the right way and into the right place. God is the life and soul of everybody we meet. And therefore, no matter whom we meet, we are meeting God. We are always under God's protection and guided by God's wisdom. Thorough protective prayer consists in realizing God as the mind, the soul, and the spirit, as the substance of the body of every individual. God is the only law unto every individual. God is the life, the immortality, and eternality. You have no immortality of your own, and I have no immortality of my own. Whatever immortality we have is the immortality of God, made manifest as our eternality and immortality. There is a need for protective prayer. We must protect ourselves at all times from the acceptance of the universal belief in two powers and in a sense of separation from God, good. God must become a living experience to us, and we must find a way to make contact with that from which we have had the sense of separation. When the Spirit touches us, the revelation we receive is that God is. Then we let the Spirit of God take over. We let the Divine Presence go before us, to make the crooked places straight. We can now know how far we are from attaining spiritual consciousness by how much we live in the future. We can now know how far we are from attaining even good normal humanhood by how much we live in the past. Spiritual being means living this moment, relaxing in it, rejoicing in it, sharing whatever there is of this moment. At every period of the day, we must be beholders. We do not strive for supply. We behold supply as it unfolds infinitely from the one source, God. We never pray for help. We become still. We rest in this prayer of the soul while we nestle in its warmth and watch as the health appears 
or as the opportunities unfold. Always we must remember that we are not seeking to have our nets filled. Empty nets no longer fill us with anxious concern. We have passed beyond that into the realm where our only desire is to behold God's spiritual universe and to tabernacle with the sons and daughters of God. We realize the Father knoweth my needs, and I stand here as a beholder, not praying for opportunity tomorrow, but sitting quietly in the atmosphere of the soul, watching my opportunity come to me. Just as the river flows to the sea, their activity governed by some law of God, because it is the normal, natural thing for a river to do, to flow to the sea, to feed the vast oceans of our earth. So it is the normal and natural thing that God's grace flows to me. It has become dammed up by desire, fear, doubt, and by believing that God was something separate and apart from my being and was not aware of my needs. Now I release all concern and I stand as a beholder of God's infinite goodness. Be still. Jesus was not addressing the sea. He was addressing his consciousness and the consciousness of his disciples. Peace be still. If our consciousness is still, there are no stormy waters within or without. If our consciousness is still, everything about us takes on the complexion of that stillness.